Over the last year, I've spent more time on my laptop than ever before, and while it obviously wasn't for the best reasons, it has helped me dial in on the systems and applications that make me a better machine learning researcher, content creator, and PhD student. So today I thought that I would give you guys a peek behind the curtain on what's on my laptop this year in terms of the applications and systems that help me get the work that I need to get done done. And if there are systems that you found that really work for you, you should definitely leave them in the comments so that we can all find interesting applications and workflows that might help us be more productive, but also keep good work-life balance. So we'll start off with the obvious thing, which is my laptop. This is the 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro from, I believe, 2020. It has 16 gigs of memory and a terabyte of storage, and this was an upgrade from my last laptop, which was a, I believe, 2016 15-inch or 16-inch MacBook Pro that had 500 gigs of storage and, again, 16 gigs of RAM. I usually try to max out the RAM when I can, because I run a lot of memory heavy programs when it comes to research, so it just makes life a little bit easier if I don't have to worry about my computer crashing because of it. On my laptop, when it comes to coding, I primarily use Atom and Sublime as my code editors when I'm working on my laptop. These are two code editors that are actually fairly different. Um, Atom is closer to a Visual Studio code in terms of layout and functionality. I also use VS Code when it becomes necessary. So if you saw the Copilot video that I made last week on GitHub Copilot, you can only run that in VS Code. So I used VS Code for that. But normally I tend to run things in Atom if I need to look at multiple files at the same time, or Sublime if I'm doing very, very basic development. Having said that, most of the time if I'm programming or analyzing data or running models, I'm not actually doing it on my laptop. I'm doing it on a remote cloud computing system that MIT has for our department. And in that case, I'm actually mostly developing in Jupyter Notebooks. This is because in most cases when I'm using this remote server, I'm not using a monitor that's attached to it, so it's easier to essentially SSH tunnel to my own laptop so that I can see what I'm actually doing when it comes to coding and run things in real time. When it comes to personal projects, however, I mostly use Paperspace, which is a cloud computing service that essentially lets you do a similar thing to having the computing cluster through my department. You can purchase access to GPUs of various quality and speed and store different amounts of data depending on how much data you have and how much you're willing to pay for it on their servers, which makes it a lot easier to run those longer term projects like the Tom Scott deepfake project that I did earlier this year. In terms of other coding things on my laptop, the only other real application that I use for development is MATLAB, and that's because that was probably the main thing that I used as an undergrad. It's a giant calculator at the end of the day, and so when it comes to doing more basic data analysis or image analysis, it's often easier to just do it in MATLAB versus doing it in Python or using the remote server if I don't need that kind of power. All right, moving on to content related things that are on my laptop, things that help me make the videos that you see on this channel. The probably major thing on here, the two major programs would be the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite and Notion. In terms of Adobe, I currently edit in Adobe. I also have DaVinci Resolve on my laptop, but I don't typically use it that much. And I primarily use Adobe Premiere and Adobe Photoshop. So Premiere to edit my videos and Photoshop to make the thumbnails for every video that goes up. When it comes to planning content, I use Notion. I'm not gonna talk too much about the template that I'm currently using because it's a product that Thomas Frank is developing that he kindly gave me early access to. It's worked really well. I highly recommend trying it out whenever he releases it for sale, but essentially it allows me to track all of the content that I'm making across every platform and script videos, create related content. So if I want to make a video about this and then I realize that I also want to make a TikTok about it, I can basically link the two scripts so that I already have most of the content written out. It's super helpful and I think that it's great for anyone who's making content on the internet to keep track of like what you're actually doing. Before using this template, I used, I think, another Thomas Frank template. Actually, he has a YouTube video tracker that I think you can find on his website. And it's essentially a more basic version of the template that I'm currently using. Also super helpful if you're making videos in particular. It's a little bit less helpful if you're making other types of content. So I highly recommend checking that out. Outside of that, I know people use Notion to track academic work. I don't do that for reasons that 
I'll talk about a little bit closer to the end of this video. If you look at my sidebar, you'll actually see that I have tabs for different PhD related things. But as a general rule, I try to keep the content planning stuff and the PhD related stuff separate in terms of the applications that I use. And then I also just don't find Notion to be that helpful for me in terms of organizing research notes and being able to actually use it on my iPad because I have an iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, which makes it very easy to take notes in class or take notes on people's presentations or record experiment information, um, which I can't really do as well in Notion. Next up in terms of things that I have on my laptop this year is most of my PhD related stuff. So that is Zotero, which is an application that essentially manages all of the papers that I'm reading. There are a bunch of different options for stuff like this. Mendeley is a really common one, which I used to use and found that the old version worked really well. And then they introduced a new version in 2020 where all of the features that I actually liked didn't work anymore. So I use Zotero. It lets me basically import PDFs of different articles and immediately have the ability to generate citations and bibliographies based on that. They also have a plugin for Google Chrome that lets you essentially link papers as citations if you're writing a manuscript, which is super helpful. Next on the list is OneNote. So if you saw my video last year about how I manage my time as a PhD student and YouTuber, I use OneNote essentially as my digital lab notebook. And it is something that syncs across my laptop and my iPad. I prefer OneNote because I can use the Apple Pencil to hand write things in my notebook essentially, as opposed to something like Notion where you can't do that. And it's worked for me pretty well so far. I think that the only thing that I don't like as much about it is that if you handwrite in Apple Notes, it will actually let you search using handwriting recognition. So you can search things that you've written by hand, whereas you can't do that in OneNote. And that would be super helpful when it comes to looking for notes or experiment data or whatever I happen to write down that I'm looking for at the time. Also in that How I Manage My Time video was discussions around calendar. So I primarily use Apple Calendar, which is mostly because I own a ton of Apple devices. Again, if you'd like an Apple smart home tour, let me know in the comments, but it makes life easier syncing across everything natively. I also use Google Calendar because both of my labs run on Google Calendar. So if I need to check on whether or not someone has reserved the surgery room or whether or not someone's using a resource that I need, that's where I'll go. But most of the time I only need to do that on my laptop. So I don't really see a reason to keep that kind of stuff on my phone or my iPad. And then in terms of browsers, this might sound a little bit weird, but I use Chrome and Safari. And this is largely because there are just certain Chrome extensions that don't exist in Safari. So Zotero is one of them. I also use it for YouTube when it comes to using the vidIQ extension, which is what I use to do tags and look at analytics and stuff like that. Outside of that, I tend to use Safari because similar to Apple Calendar. It syncs across everything. I can save things to the reading list and it's just a little bit easier to use in terms of meshing with the Apple ecosystem. So that's what's on my laptop this year. This is a setup that's currently working for me in this kind of hybrid work from home slash going into lab sometimes situation that I'm currently in, although it might change in the future. So if you'd ever like to see an updated version on this, you can definitely let me know in the comments. But there's one thing that I didn't talk about that really ties all of these systems together for me. And that's a physical notebook, which I actually discuss more in the extended version of this video on Nebula. If you haven't heard, Nebula is a streaming platform built by me and some of my friends, including people like Simon Clark, 12 Tone, and Medlife Crisis. On Nebula, you can find ad-free versions of all of our videos, as well as extended versions of some of our videos, and bonus content that we can post without having to worry about how well it will do on YouTube. So if you're watching this video on Nebula, you would be hearing about how using a notebook has made me a better machine learning programmer, a better researcher, and a better content creator. You'd also get access to our Nebula originals, which you can't find anywhere else, including Tom Scott's Game Show Money or a very good trivia show where I won $500 for drawing a very nice circle. And the best way to sign up for Nebula is actually through CuriosityStream, who are kindly sponsoring this video. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction videos, including their new documentary, I Human, which explores the imminent AI revolution and what it might mean for AI systems to think for themselves. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so if you click on the link in the description or use my promo code JORDAN, you can get access to CuriosityStream for 26% off their annual plans, with Nebula included for free for as long as you are a CuriosityStream member. 
and that's less than $15 a year. Again, signing up for Curiosity Stream and Nebula is a great way to directly support my channel while getting to watch my videos ad-free and getting to hear more about how physical paper notebooks have made me a better programmer. So sign up for Curiosity Stream and Nebula at curiositystream.com slash Jordan or using the promo code Jordan. You can also click down here to sign up for Curiosity Stream and Nebula using my promo code. And if you want to learn more about how I manage my time as a PhD student, you can watch this video. You can find all my various socials over here and I'll see you all next week. Bye.